Thanks for joining me for MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. I'm Dan Adams. Today we're going to talk about rotary friction welding and low force friction welding of drill pipe. Today we're going to talk about friction welding applications of drill pipe. We refer to drill pipe, it could be oil well drill pipe, it could be water well drill pipe, or it could be rock drilling. All three applications. We show this as a direct drive cycle, but we call it rotary because the predominant use on the oil well drill pipe is inertia welding. And the application is interesting because we have to put a lot of energy into this weld because it's a hardenable steel. In inertia welding, we actually use four times as much energy and twice as much load in order to be able to get the energy in uh, and make sure that we're not forming martensite uh, at the end of the weld. But I'll walk through the direct drive cycle for you. We're gonna take the component that's rotating, we're gonna bring it up to a speed, uh, target RPM, we're gonna bring on first friction pressure. Many of the time these components are coming in dirty or rusty or they don't have square weld interfaces. So this first friction pressure will help square up the interfaces, reduce the coefficient of friction so that we can bring on a higher load without stalling the motor. It's second friction where the cycle time really gets extended in the direct drive cycle to add this extra energy. And we're gonna, as a result, create more upset in the process. Once we hit the desired amount of upset, we're gonna bring our rotary speed down to zero and we're gonna bring on our forge load. If I look at a traditional oil well drill pipe uh, component, you can see that there's a lot of upset with this weld. You can see the large flash curls. The flash curl is volumetric, so we have just as much upset on the outside as we do on the inside, but the inside space is much tighter, therefore the flash curl looks bigger. Many times we'll be shearing off this ID flash in the oil well application. In rock drilling, there's a gas, gas lancing operation to remove this ID flash. So the flash formation is one of the things that we design around with respect to traditional friction welding. In low force friction welding, we're not getting the heat from the second friction phase, we're adding the heat with a preheating step up front. This could be induction, it could be resistance heating. And then we're gonna go into our motion profile. We may bring on a low load, we can do first friction, second friction, and forge, or we can just bring on the forge load from the beginning. But because we're adding the energy up front, we don't need a long cycle time and a, lar a long second friction phase to create a whole bunch of upset to get the energy in. The energy is already there. So we can make fast welds with a low amount of upset, which changes the flash morphology. And now you may not have to even remove the flash. If we look at this low force example, you can see we just get a flash bulge on the ID or on the OD, we get a flash bulge on the ID. You may not have to remove this flash at all uh, inside the machine or as a post welding application. One of the other interesting things about oil well drill pipe is the grain structure because of the flash starts to change direction as it's forming the upset. So you have the incoming part material that slowly upsets and then it gets pushed out into the flash curl, changing the direction. If I have an acidic application, that acid starts to eat away at those end grains and reduces the life of the component. If I have a low force weld where, my, where I'm just getting a bulge, I don't have that end grain exposure, so I'm gonna have much better resistance to acidic applications. So this is one of the things that we need manufacturers to think about with respect to low force. How do the incoming parts come to the machine? Are they square, or are they clean? Do we want a low upset weld? Do we have to do ID flash removal? Do we have to do OD flash removal? Do we have to do a post weld heat treatment uh, because of the uh, metallurgy? Or can we remove many of those steps as out of our manufacturing process because they're being taken care of in the low force application? So we would encourage manufacturers to look at the entire process with respect to low force, look at their incoming components and redesign your manufacturing process to take advantages of this so that we can increase your throughput and we can decrease your overall cost. We can do this for you as part of a weld development process. We have machines at MTI to help introduce you to low force. We can hand you samples in your material so that you can test them on your own and we can walk you all the way through this new manufacturing process. 
Thank you for joining us for this episode of MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. For more information on this topic or other friction welding solutions, please visit our website at mtiwelding.com.